Welcome to the Weekly Roar, coming live from the Lion's Den, helping new managers become great leaders and awesome bosses. And now, here's your host, Greg Storch. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Lion's Den. This is the Weekly Roar. I just wrapped up my leadership series the week before last and decided it would be a good time to take a little break and regroup. We all have to do that every now and then, as well as we should. The leadership series on lessons learned kicked off over six months ago, and I shared a lot of lessons learned during that time. But I wanted to go back over the next few months and revisit those lessons because, well, I feel like they're just that good. Maybe you missed a lesson or you just forgot about it because it's been so long. So what I'm going to do is recap two lessons each week, sort of micro lessons in review. I'm rewinding the clock all the way back to October of 2020, and I'm going to share some reminders of lessons one and two. Now, Before we jump into that, let me just do a quick introduction. I'm Greg Storch. I'm the owner of Lion Enterprise, host of the Weekly Roar, and the founder of a worldwide bartered coaching program called The Helping Hand. I'm a certified professional leadership coach and a certified leadership speaker and trainer. And as a friendly reminder, you can find all of my video resources on my website at lion-enterprise.com. Just look for the Lion's Pride Library and you can check them all out. Okay, let's start with the very first lesson I shared with you. And I called that one, We're Better Together, Even at the Top. What that lesson was all about was the common belief that many leaders hold. And that is that it's lonely at the top. Honestly, I used to subscribe to that mentality for years. I believed that leaders needed to isolate themselves to avoid showing favoritism and establishing relationships with some people and not others. It was just easier for me to place myself in a position in the organization where there was only room for one, me. (laughs) The lesson I learned, though, through all of that was if you're lonely at the top, you're doing something wrong. During this lesson learned in leadership, I shared the story of my time as a program manager in Washington, D.C. I was being promoted to program manager and needed to backfill my position as the operations manager before that could happen. So I called an old shipmate of mine, Kate. Now, Kate didn't come from the IT industry. She actually spent her entire adult life in the dental industry, specifically dental sales, and she was damn good at it. When I called Kate about the job, she thought I had lost my mind, but I knew what the teams needed. I knew what I needed in order to turn that sinking ship around, and Kate was the one who could help me to do that. That decision proved to be the turning point in my BS, belief system. (laughs) When Kate took over daily operations of that contract, I noticed that she began spending a lot of time speaking with the people on the contract. At the weekly manager's meeting, she would bring in home-baked treats and serve them to everyone. You know, one year, she even invited one of the managers and his family to her house for Thanksgiving dinner. You know, to be honest, I was a little pissed. I was like, Kate, what are you doing? You can't be friends with these people. You have to lead them. (laughs) Man, year after year, Kate did her thing. And finally, when it was time for Kate to move upward, the teams took it really hard. She was like a mother to all of them. They loved her. And that was the first time I realized that I had it all wrong. I didn't have to distance myself from everyone, and it didn't have to be lonely at the top. Now, 
I know, that's a complete 180 from where I used to be just six years or so ago. But it was a necessary lesson to learn. And that's why I wanted to share that one with you during the mentoring moments in leadership. Now, here's a couple of things I learned. First of all, we don't get anywhere without the help of others, and that includes leadership. And the second thing I've learned is that good leaders take others along with them. They lift others. And if we're lifting others to the top along with us, then how the heck can it be so lonely at the top? It shouldn't be. And if it is, well, maybe it's time to rethink your approach, just like I did. From that lesson, I was able to share a few beliefs with you. And here's one of them. We don't achieve anything of significance in life without the help of others. When it comes to leadership, our success comes in large part as a result of those we're leading. Now, another one was that good leaders understand that the whole point of leadership is to take others to the top. My mentor, John Maxwell, always says a good leader is one who knows the way, shows the way, and goes the way. That's a perfect saying for this because it's so much better for leaders to help others to get to the top than it is to spend their time climbing to the top alone. The third belief that I developed to help me realize that it doesn't have to be lonely at the top is that I had to unlearn and relearn my thinking about being the person in charge, the one at the top of the org structure. A lot of my time wasn't spent hanging out at the top. It was spent turning around and helping others continue moving along their own paths. I've done that for so many people over the years. When we spend time with those we're trying to help, you make the climb to success together and you get connected to them. I was also able to share some tips on helping you close the gap between you and your people so you don't have to be lonely at the top. Here are those tips again to help you become a more effective leader. That first one was if you rely on your title or position to get others to follow you, you will always be a lonely leader. You'll want to stop thinking in terms of position and start thinking in terms of relationships. When leaders use their positions to get others to follow them, they become lonely leaders because they separate themselves from those they're leading. But the person who takes a relational approach to leadership will never be lonely. The second tip was leadership is all about people. We're in the people business. <laughs> Think about it. If you don't have people following you, then you aren't leading, are you? In order for a leader to lead well, they have to know those they're leading. Now, Theodore Roosevelt captured this best when he said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Good leaders care about their people. And the last thing that I wanted to say, and you've heard me say this a million times, is that we don't accomplish anything without the help of others. One is just too small a number to achieve anything of significance. I've had hundreds of personal examples of accomplishments I've reached that involve the help of others. Actually, everything I've achieved in life is the result of others helping me. Now, I love this saying by Mother Teresa who said, I can do things you cannot. You can do things I cannot. Together, we can do great things. At the end of the day, we need each other and there's no reason why you can't bring others to the top with you. It doesn't have to be lonely at the top and all it requires is a change in mindset. If you're lonely as a leader, it's by choice. You can choose to take others along the path with you and share the view at the top. You don't have to climb the mountain alone. Good leaders have a team that they trust and have relationships with them. They focus on whatever it is they're trying to accomplish together. I made the choice to be a leader 
who takes others on the journey with me, and I hope you make the same choice. Now, that brings me to the second lesson learned in leadership that I shared with you, and that one was called, It All Begins With You. And it was a lesson about the importance of self-leadership. When it comes to leadership, one of the hardest persons you'll ever lead is yourself. It's a critical piece to the success of good leaders. If you want to be a successful leader and lead others effectively, you're going to have to be able to lead yourself first. You can't take anyone anywhere. You haven't been yourself, right? Everything we do as leaders has to be done by us first before we try to help others do the same thing. During that weekly roar, I shared tips on how you can get better at leading yourself because if I know anything about leadership, one thing is certain. We have to be able to lead ourselves before we will ever be able to lead others. So that tip number one was that before we can be good leaders, we have to be great followers. So the first thing to focus on is getting better at following. In order to lead, you have to learn to follow. You can't be a know-it-all. You have to be coachable. Benjamin Franklin nailed it when he said, he who cannot follow cannot lead. Being a good follower gives leaders an edge. It gives them the perspective of their followers because they've been down the same road. I learned that particular lesson as a Mustang in the Navy. A Mustang is someone who served in the enlisted ranks and then became an officer later. Because of that status, the enlisted sailors that I led knew that I had experienced the same things they were experiencing. I could relate to them and they could relate to me and their experiences. So remembering where I came from gave me a leg up as a leader. Now, the second tip I shared with you to get better with self-leadership was to develop your self-discipline. <laughs> now, I used the example of exercise to reinforce this tip. Many people have the intention of getting up to exercise in the morning before work, but they never do for one reason or another. But whatever it is, if you don't make good on the promises you make yourself, how can you make good on the promises you make to others? We have to make good decisions and we have to be consistent about it. And it isn't just about making the right decision. It's also refraining from making the wrong decision. In order to do that, you have to have self-discipline. Self-discipline, by definition, is the ability to control our own feelings and overcome our weaknesses. It's the ability to pursue what we think is right despite temptations to abandon it or how we feel about it. Self-discipline is one of the most important and useful skills we can have. It's essential in every area of life and Though most people acknowledge its importance, not many take action to strengthen it. The third tip that I shared during that video was the focus on practicing patience. And I shared this quote by St. Francis de Sales, who told us, have patience with all things, but first of all, with yourself. Then I reminded you that Nothing worthwhile comes easy, and in order to achieve success, we must develop our ability to exercise patience. Patience is our capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset, but having access to whatever we want, whenever we want, has changed us. People are less patient in their daily lives now than they ever were before. Before the world of cell phones and the world of the internet, when we practice our own patience, it helps us to become better leaders because 
We can deliberately slow down, connect with our followers, ask for help, and keep motivating our team. We won't be able to do those things if we're so impatient that we run too far ahead of our own people. And then that fourth and final tip I shared during this lesson learned in leadership was to seek accountability. Now, here's the thing. Timing is everything. A lot of people think about accountability as being willing to explain our actions, but that occurs after the action has occurred. Effective accountability should happen before the action is ever taken. I exercise this tip by engaging with an accountability partner. You know, before I moved to Italy, I shared that I had an accountability partner for an entire year, and it was one of my most productive years ever. And in early March of 2020, I reconnected with a childhood friend who is a very successful businesswoman, and we became accountability partners as well. We've met every Thursday since March 5th, 2020. Now, here's the reason why it's important to be accountable to someone other than yourself. We're all fallible, and we tend to not recognize that about ourselves. When we do that, it can be really dangerous. So here were two rules that you can use that will help you to avoid those kind of issues. First of all, never trust yourself. (laughs) And second, always be accountable to someone other than yourself. Those two things can help you lead yourself a lot better. I mean, let me ask you this. Are you willing to seek and accept advice? Well, if so, then that's a great indicator of accountability. If you seek it early enough before you take actions, you'll decrease the probability of going off track. Most wrong actions happen because someone wasn't held accountable early enough. So those were the tips that I shared with you in the lion's den that day. When we get better at following, develop our self-discipline, practice patience, and become accountable early and to someone other than ourselves, we get better at leading ourselves. Now, I hope this lesson I shared with you helped you to do that. What we do, how we conduct ourselves on a daily basis, how we lead ourselves is a great measurement on our ability to lead others well. While we may be the hardest person we'll ever lead, we're the most important one. Do that well, and you will be a great leader for others. All right. So those were the first two lessons learned in leadership that I shared with you during that series. If you're lonely at the top, then you're doing something wrong. And I also shared the importance of being able to lead yourself. If you want to keep running to the roar, then join me next week as I continue these micro lessons in review. And Recap the third and fourth lessons learned in leadership. All you have to do is just come on back to the lion's den next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Thanks everybody for supporting me and watching the weekly roar today. I appreciate you. And until we meet again next Wednesday, remember, be powerful, but stay poised just like a lion. Bye everybody. Thanks for watching the Weekly Roar live event at lionenterprise.com. If you enjoyed this video, please tell others to join us each week here in the Lion's Den. Thanks again, and see you next week.